Uh, if everyone is uh, okay and ready to go, uh, we will begin with our next uh, guest, who uh, will give us a uh, one-minute personal statement, and uh, then we'll be asked five questions. It's back up to five now. And uh, then we'll take questions from the floor, and there will be a closing statement time of uh, three minutes. My uh, wristwatch does not match the old clock on the wall, <laughs> so I think it's actually closer to three. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Martha Camacho Rodriguez. Describe, please, your role as a trustee compared to that of the college superintendent. Okay, well, as a trustee, you are um, one of the main stakeholders. Um, and so as a stakeholder, you align yourself with the individuals who are running the university. And so for me, without the faculty and ancillary staff um, that directly deals with students, you would really have no one um, holding it together. So in my opinion, the teachers, faculty, um, everybody that it takes to keep this, this establishment together are the ones that run it. So as a stakeholder, it would be my responsibility to align myself with everyone and to make sure that we're all on the same page and agenda to push forward the top priority, which are our students. So our students are our mission, they're our goal, they're basically the ones that um, butter our bread. And so many of us as educators, um, this is not an easy job. And so many of us do not come into teaching because, oh, uh, I'd rather do this than something else. So uh, this is a calling and it's something that's real important for um, trustees and individuals at the top um, to understand that the individuals that are running the university need to have all the support and need to have um, all of the things in place to make sure that we are successful in running that mission. And question uh, number two is, how would you relate to the Cerritos College Faculty Federation, uh, that is our union CCFF, if you are elected? Well, as a union member, I am biased. So um, I come from a long line of union um, workers, um, beginning with my grandfather who was a steel worker. And so for me, it's, I feel like I was born into a union family and that's where my alignment is. So it's important um, that we respect and honor our union. And as a, a trustee, I think I need to go ahead and be versed in what it is I need to do as a board member to align myself with everyone who needs to support our contract and basically sign a contract for our faculty. So for myself, um, I would hope to align myself with all the trustees so that we can go ahead and work with other stakeholders to make sure the faculty um, has their contract in place to support it. And question number three, under what circumstances do you believe it is important for you to consult with uh, the union CCFF before making a decision as a trustee? Um, well, as trustees voting for a contract or to approve a contract, 
I think it would be very important to ensure that contracts that are voted on are not just voted on because it's on the table. And so prior to that, to that um, vote to accept this contract or approve the contract, um, there should be dialogue. There should be dialogue. There should be an open forum where faculty, staff, and everyone who falls under a union contract can come to the table before a vote and say these are some uh, securities or these are some things that we need to ensure so that our faculty is taken care of. Question number four, the relationship between uh, CCFF and the district has been strained over the last year uh, due to a protracted negotiation process. How would you work to improve this relationship? Well, first of all, um, there needs to be a little bit more of a team building atmosphere. Um, if we're not all in the same, if we're not all in the same agenda, the same page, and moving forward with the same objective. It's really hard to have anything approved uh, or anything of value or substantial, um, I would say, um, value to, to our um, faculty or to our students. So with all the rifts and all of the disagreements, um, that impacts and trickles down to the people we serve. And so it's hard um, as a faculty member to have a contract that's been expired for seven years or not ratified, and it's hard to see that. It, it, would, be, it would be real obvious to see that there's gonna be a lot of disappointment, a lot of um, grievances, a lot of uh, issues that are going to plague the faculty and everybody else around because while you do not have all of those things in place, you're not getting your needs met as the educators on campus. And when you don't have your needs met, it's hard to meet other individuals' needs. That's just the bottom line. And finally, question number five. Why should the CCFF endorse you? <laughs> um, as an educator and a union member, I feel that I have some experience um, as an educator and a, union, and a union member that would help us seek um, that alignment that we need on the board. Um, I think um, I would be a good reflection of my uh, of the people that I will be serving, and so that's real important for me um, to have your endorsement. So having your endorsement um, would guarantee for me that you understand that I'm coming in here um, to support the students, to support the faculty, and the mission of the university. Thank you. We open it now to questions from the floor. Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie from the librarian here. Um, how familiar are you with the state laws or ed code that governs like what aspects of the college are meant to be controlled by faculty versus what aspects of the college fall under the board's purview? Um, I can speak on the K-12 system and it aligns similar to the junior colleges and the colleges. So as faculty, you're all stakeholders. And so on any given um, issue related to um, the university, you have to have input. And so those are all um, non-negotiables. They're agreements that the states and funding sources look at. So um, I'm familiar in the way that obviously if we're getting funds to Cerritos College, you're getting funds because you have a librarian because you have science teachers, because you have faculty in other departments, and so you would need to go ahead and um, give input so that the state um, understands that we have individuals running these programs and they're successful because the faculty is running these programs and um, the students are in these successful um, programs because we have faculty here who are working at CARE about the issue. I'm not sure if that answered your, your question about the funding. So faculty input is necessary. You have to have that. But all stakeholders have to have their voice when it pertains to funding. Walter Fernandez. Thank you. I have um, a question. What, um, what problems do the teachers Well, a big problem first, um, if we go with union issues, um, not having a signed contract for uh, 
last seven years is a big issue. And if you're not gonna have a signed contract that's gonna meet the needs of faculty, that would only be a red flag to me with other issues that trickle down from not having a signed contract. And so obviously resources might be an issue and um, perhaps uh, lack of classes or having a variety of schedules that would meet students' needs to leave here in a timely fashion. So it doesn't look like it's um, a staff issue. So sometimes it's easier to blame staff as to why numbers are not where they should be. But when you look at the logistics of the schedule, so do you have enough schedules to offer classes so that students are actually enrolled in these classes moving forward to the next step? If we're saying that it will take um, X amount of units to leave here to Cal State Dominguez, um, but students have to wait a few semesters to take one or two classes and they're just waiting and waiting. In that type of situation, you're going to change numbers so that they're negative. They're not gonna look positive if students are gonna get frustrated and say, mom, I'm just gonna drop out. This is not important. I'll go somewhere else. And so um, to have numbers change um, for students to transfer or having just students not take dead units that um, are not gonna be of value of whether it's a transfer or something else. I realize um, people might come here just because they might wanna take a class of interest but then those should be designated um, data that show these people are just here taking dead units because they want to take every class in, I don't know, um, a computer class, but they don't want to transfer. They already have a degree. And so that would not show a negative on transfer rate. And then other students that come in here, they don't have an idea on what they want to do. So maybe having um, enough resources and support for those students so everybody understands that it's not just because of the teachers that these numbers are negative. Are you familiar with 10 plus one? This question was asked before. No, I was just listening a little bit. I'm not. Well, uh, it comes in various facets and colors, but basically faculty uh, gets to govern the college as well, along with the president and the board. As boards gives us the policy, but uh, you know, this destiny of this college is us. And there is a lot of Managing, managing uh, you know, attempts from the board, um, in which has in fact infiltrated in many ways into actually what we need to do instead of, you know, cooperatively um, <coughs> enhance the law, which is 1725, and then 10 plus one, which is faculty senate and what the senate calls up for um, mini managing, right? Um, Micromanaging actually, exactly. Um, well, then we go back to what is the law. So as um, I always like to think of, um, I am um, the manager of my area. I go to my classroom and I'm in charge. And um, unfortunately, sometimes I might have micromanagers deciding what's gonna happen outside of what I know needs to happen from what I have to follow on paper. So we all know law as educators. And um, I think it's unfortunate that if we're looking at 
people outside of the faculty preventing us as educators um, from carrying through with what we need to do, then we need to address those issues with um, possibly actions. We need to address those issues with complaints. Um, I think that a lot of times people don't want to rock the boat because you're in a boat and some people might not feel like, oh, okay, well, let's not say anything because if we say something, you know, I might not get tenured or I might not get what I need and so I'm not gonna say anything and then we set the status quo. And I'm not, I'm not gonna put that as a statement of blaming faculty. What I will make that as a statement is sometimes status quo stays and um, sometimes it's hard, I think, individually or collectively to fight a battle, especially if the group uh, who oversees has taken over. And um, the team building is at that point where we need to look at what do we need to do to build a bridge between two opposing teams. And obviously, you know, we're all on teams playing a game or a battle, however you want to put it. But um, ultimately, everybody needs to work um, for the benefit of the students and the benefit of moving the university forward. That's the benefit. One over here and then one right here. In the back too. Oh, in the back too? Wow, who raised their hand first? I was like, oh.
that I'm moving into, and I have to say that because I'm claiming it. So the position that I'm moving into, if I am one of four people and we need those four votes, then I am one of those four people that will be here to make the change. And so I understand as an educator, I understand as a parent, I understand as a community member when we have dysfunction with finance um, within a system, it impacts everyone. It impacts everyone. And so for myself, um, if I'm coming on board um, to align, even with the individuals that oppose everything as educators that we want, the goal would be to build a bridge with those people to bring them to our side. So that's the goal, is to come on board, be one of those four that votes to move anything for change. That's what needs to happen. And I understand you do have a small group of people that are already allied. So if I am one of those four, I believe that um, that group of votes will make changes. And I believe that that group will hear the faculty. Sometimes I think it, it takes just a few rotten apples to mess up the whole basket. And um, I don't want to say it like that as a negative. I, I, I should probably retract that. <laughs> but um, unfortunately, at times, we may be in situations that are dysfunctional. And one, two, or three people might be the reason why hundreds are impacted. And so it's time to make a change in numbers. Dr. Kim. <laughs> Can I like to know a little bit more about your philosophy as it relates to academic <coughs> freedom and sabbatical? Um, well, as an educator in a K-12 system, we don't get sabbaticals, <laughs> we get summer break. That's how I see it. But I understand coming into the university system, it's very important in my opinion. It's important as an educator at any level that you um, move outside of the classroom to gain more ex exposure and experience to bring back an enriching um, curriculum or experience that you're going to share with your class and classes coming forward. And your, That's thoughts, for, and your thoughts on academic freedom? Um, I work in special education, and for me, working in special education, I have academic freedom. I have to try everything and anything to help my students be successful, and my students do come to your school. That was one of the things that really um, attracted me to um, moving to this step, and um, in, I guess I would say uh, the second part of um, what do I wanna do professionally. Um, so as an advocate for my students, it's important that the people who are teaching you are not just teaching you one way. You're going to need a variety of ways to reach everyone. It can't be just one way. So I think it's very important as educa educators that we, are, that we are the system that are going to support our personal and professional growth so we continue to be the best that we are. That's real important. And yes, we are at the uh, closing statements. Uh, time, so if you would make a closing statement, uh, we would thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I, I'm really excited about the possibility of sitting in trustee area one seat. Um, although I live in Downey and I work in Compton, um, it's real important for me um, to look at my both experiences of where I'm coming from as an educator, as a community member, as a parent. And so, um, having the experience of getting my students ready to come here. My students have picked Cerritos College over and over and over because they're not happy in the area that they're at or what they have. And so if this is the best option that I have seen and from best we can make it better, um, I feel very hopeful that changes can happen. 